Bible, uh, Joseph. And uh, I think that Joseph's course is actually really interesting, especially when we try to understand Jesus and even Father's own course. So before I give my, my sermon, I, I'd like to read some of Father's words from the Chan Sun Gyan. There is a force that moves us toward the final destination of our desire and our desire's greatest standard of perfection. We need to discover the fact that this force is operating within us. The Bible says that our body is God's temple, but we don't understand what this means. These are words of great importance. This is because whoever great God may be, when we form a partnership with God, in which we can whisper words of love, and when we become one with God in that love partnership, we, we receive the right to inherit the universe. So, uh, you know, Father, uh, actually this morning we sang the blessing of glory, I, I don't think we didn't sing it this time. But uh, in the, the, the earlier morning service, they sang the Blessing of Glory. Do you all know that? Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, so I, I just want to mention about that point because it really connects to this story. You know, Father, Father wrote that song uh, when he came out of prison. And uh, so, you know, most people, when they... they when they when they're in prison, most people in prison are not for, not very happy about it. And uh, but but father, when he came out of the prison, he he wrote that song, and he expressed gratitude to God for the grace that that he received in prison. And uh, I I don't know if you know this, but did, did anybody hear that father <coughs> spoke a few times? He wanted to create. A museum for insects. Anybody remember that? Okay. Ermgard remembers that. That's good. Okay. So, well, why did Father want to create a, a museum for insects? I think it was because when he was in the prison, his only friend was an insect. That was the only person that he could talk to. I think Father was in... Uh, Hung on well for almost three years. And, and, yeah. So, and so th this relates actually, so let's talk about Joseph. Joseph was the, the second to last youngest son of Jacob, and he was the apple of his father's eye, and, uh, and he, he, really, he really felt that his father's love, and he felt God's love. And I think you may remember that he, he had two dreams. Anybody remember the two dreams he had? He had a dream uh, that there, there was sheaves of wheat, and these sheaves of, there were 12 sheaves of wheat, and they all bowed down to him. So when he shared, you know, he's very innocent, he said, Oh, Dad, I, I had this wonderful dream. Uh, Basically, the dream means that you and all my brothers were bowing down to me. <laughs> uh, do you think his brothers were really excited to hear this dream? No, they weren't. There's another dream with the exact same message. So, Jacob's brothers were, they were not happy campers about this kind of young, beloved son who was having all these wild dreams. And the reason I want to share this with all of you today is because, see, I, I believe that God is not stingy. I mean, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think God is not a stingy person. And I believe that God gives inspirations to everybody. Each person in the room here, especially young, young people, I really want you to think about this. God speaks to each person. And God gives you inspirations. And sometimes your inspirations are different 
from what the rest of your family might be doing. Maybe you want to become a, uh, fly airplanes, okay, for instance. And nobody in your, your family ever flew any airplanes. People think you're crazy. Why would you do that? You know, it's dangerous and it probably costs a lot of money and, you know, this type of thing. So, the point I'm trying to get across is, I think God does speak to each one of us. God gives us ideas. For some of you, you know, uh, mothersly emphasizing that we should do tribal messiahship and witnessing, which, you know, it, 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 maybe you get you know, an inspiration about how to do that uh, or how to serve your community. It, is it always the case that other people always think that your ideas are really brilliant, genius ideas that they should all support? No. Quite often the reaction is the exact opposite. Right? No, no one, I, I never saw that before. No one in our family ever did that. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? <laughs> So, you know, this is what Joseph experienced. And his brothers came up with a brilliant plan. They said, we're going to get rid of this troublemaker, and we're going to kill him. So, you know, the young people here, you, you may not get along with your brothers or sisters, but you can be grateful, because probably your brothers or sisters did not talk talk about killing you, I, I hope. <laughs> you may not get along with each other, but Joseph had a big problem, anyway. So, his brothers made a plan, and, you know, his father sent them, Joseph, to, you know, bring a message to his brothers, and so Joseph is very innocent, he kind of goes to bring this message to his brothers who are, you know, watching their huge sheep holdings, and, you know, watching those things. And they, they grabbed him, they tore off this beautiful coat that his father had given him, this multicolored coat that you may have heard about, and they threw him in it, it says a cistern. A cistern is a huge hole in the ground that I guess they use that to store wheat or something like that. So they threw him into the cistern and they were figuring out how to kill him. Then, one of the compassionate brothers said, let's not kill him. There, there are some slave traders, uh, there's a caravan of slave traders. We can sell them into slavery, and, you know, you know, that's better. We shouldn't kill him. Let's just make him a slave for the rest of his life. That was a compassionate one. So, they did that. They did that. They, they, they took their brother and they sold him into slavery and he was taken off. And I, I, they don't describe this in the Bible, but I'm trying to figure out how were the slaves, you know, they, maybe they tied his hands together like this and he's like in a line of slaves or something? Or maybe they tied him back the camel. I'm not really sure how they did it in those days. So they took him to slavery. And, you know, it's... And I was thinking, what was Joseph thinking during this whole, you know, this time in his life? I'm sure he was struggling. God, you, you've been giving me all these revelations about what, what you're going to do in my life. And this looks like the exact opposite of what you're, you told me. You know, you said that I, I, I would be important and be raised up and do important things. And I'm a slave. So, <laughs> so then he was taken to Egypt and he was made a slave in the house of one of the pharaoh's uh, uh, lead, lead lieutenants, Potiphar. And so, one good thing about, about Joseph is that I really admire about him is that he didn't let resentment poison his heart. He didn't, he, you know, he could have been angry. You know, I'm sure Satan, you know, the, the Bible talks about what God was saying to him and the visions he was getting in dreams. 
The Bible doesn't tell you what Satan was saying to him. What do you think Satan was saying to him? Your brothers tried to kill you. And then they sold you into slavery. God has abandoned you. Don't you think that was what Satan was saying to him? Yeah. But the, thing, the great thing about Joseph was he didn't let that type of like negative self-talk. Do, do you know about negative self-talk? I know none of you have this problem. No. Okay? Okay. But just to be honest here, sometimes I have to admit, sometimes I hear those negative things, those negative little words that are burning into, into my brain, saying, no, no one believes in what you're doing, no one agrees with what you're doing, <laughs> I could go on and on, I, I don't want to do that. Okay. But, Joseph didn't, didn't give in to that type of negative self-talk, and he said, God, even though I don't understand why I'm in this situation, I am going to do what's right. I am going to honor you in everything that I do. And if, if my master tells me to sweep this floor, I'm going to do this. I'm, this is going to be the best floor in the, in the whole of Egypt. Okay? That's what Joseph did. And you know what happened? Potiphar said, you know, this, you know, the other, the other slaves don't care what they do. They do a half-hearted job. They just sort of don't care. But this Joseph guy, he, he really puts his whole heart into everything that he does. And he doesn't lie. He tells the truth. I need someone like that who will, who, will, who will be honest and tell the truth. So he promoted Joseph to be the head of his entire household. Okay, so that was encouraging, but then there was another problem. Potiphar's wife became sexually attracted to Joseph. And Potiphar was out, I guess, he's a very important person, traveling a lot. And Potiphar's wife wanted to basically get him to bed. And Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him many, many times. And Joseph said, I can't do that. I can't betray my master. I can't be, you know, it, it, this is not the right thing, and I can't betray God. And so it's against my beliefs. I can't do this. So then finally, this Potiphar's wife, she, she, she just couldn't get this this kind of obsession out of her mind. And she, one time, there's nobody else around, and she grabbed his clothing, and then he ran away, and his, she ripped off his clothing. He ran out of the house naked, okay? <laughs> he had no clothes on. And then she started shouting. He tried to attack me. And, and then when, uh, Potiphar came back, this slave that you got, he tried to attack me. And then Potiphar was angry and he had him thrown into prison. So then, now he's in prison because he, he's accused of attacking his boss's wife. And things are not looking good here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's interesting, if, if you read the scripture, it says that God was with him in prison. You know, and I, I mentioned before about fa when Father was in prison, you know, God gave all these revelations to, to true Father, that he would save the human race, that he would create the kingdom of heaven on earth, and Father was thrown into prison for many, many, many years. And the interesting thing is that Father said that that's the time when he felt closest to God. You know, with this reading that we had this morning, it says, 
however great God may be, when we form a partnership with God in which we can whisper words of love, and when we become one with God in that love partnership, we receive the right to inherit the universe. This is what Father is talking about, this, cor this course. And so, I, I have to give you some really bad advice, which is this. When, when things look the worst, when it looks like everyone hates you, and everyone thinks you're wrong, and, but you're doing it out of the right motivation to, to help God, then that is, the, that is the time when you can experience God's love the most. So you should actually thank people when, if people are persecuting you, Bob Beebe, and opposing what you're trying to do, then that is the time for you to to really become close to God. Does, does that make sense to you? Good. So, anyway, in, 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 the, uh, in prison, Joseph was, um, you know, he was there, and actually, even in the prison, the, the, the prison guards quickly realized, this Joseph, he is not whining, complaining, and he's not praying to God, God, get me out of here, I'm a victim. No, that's not what Joseph is doing at all. And he has an unselfish mind, and he's trying to help the other prisoners. Uh, if you remember, the baker was thrown into prison with him, and the, the uh, Pharaoh's cupholder, they were also put in prison with him. And he, they had two dreams, and he interpreted those, their dreams. Uh, and so... He had an unselfish mind. Anyway, it turns out the Pharaoh also had this, these dreams uh, about set, uh, basically seven fat cows and seven skinny cows, and he didn't know what the heck this dream meant. And then the baker who, who Joseph had interpreted the dream for and had been released, and had forgotten to tell the Pharaoh about this Jewish kid who helped him out in, the, in prison. He said, oh, I forgot. Uh, there's this Jewish, Jewish guy in the prison that we've been there for a few years. We, we, we've he's been rotting in prison. We forgot about him. But he, he can interpret dreams. So they brought him out, and he, he interpreted the dream of the Pharaoh's dream, which was that Egypt would have seven years of plenty and many, many uh, crops and of abundance, but there'd be seven years of famine and drought where if they did not do anything, the entire nation of Egypt would, would basically starve to death. And not just Egypt, but the whole Middle East. So the Pharaoh said, and then Joseph said, this is what I, I advise that you do, or what I feel God is telling me to tell you. You need to appoint somebody who is honest and incorruptible, and you need, that person needs to be in charge of the whole country and gather one-fifth of all the, the crops for seven years and put, the, put those away in, in Storage, maybe in cisterns. He knew something about cisterns, didn't he? So you need to put these away in the cisterns and gather this because we need to, we need to prepare for these seven years of drought. And then the Pharaoh looked around and said, "Who can I trust to do this?" So who do you think he? Who do you think the Pharaoh chose to be in charge of of all of this? Got it. All right. You got you get the, the A here. So, yeah, so he chose Joseph to be in charge of the whole country. Now, this to me is such an amazing story because this is somebody who, 
His brothers tried to kill him. <laughs> they sold him into slavery. They threw him in a prison. And then God raises him up to basically be the second person in the entire empire next to, to, the, to the king. And this, you know, this to me is an amazing story. You know, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, right? You know, in the song that the song that was sung, they're talking about you know, like this very beautiful manger, and you know, it sounds like very bucolic and beautiful. It, it was it was a cold, dark, dirty place where animals were defecating, and that's where Jesus was born. The same type of miserable situation, but. The incredible thing is, if you remain loyal to God with what God has inspired you to do, do not give into resentment. And, and let me just clarify about this point. I believe, I, I, I don't know if Pastor Minoj is going to agree with this, but I believe that it's okay to complain to God. Sometimes. Okay. Not all the time. But sometimes, I honestly, I honestly believe that sometimes being, sometimes formality gets in the way of our relationship with God. Sometimes you need to just tell God directly, I am really... I'm in trouble here, and I need I need to hear your voice. So I, I, I really hope that you understand this point. So it's okay to, you know, because again, what Satan Satan's accusation is that God lied to you. That to me is, I mean, aside from all the, the details of <laughs> the betrayal and the, the miserable course that Joseph went through. In, in, the, in the deeper issue is that God lied to you. That's what, that's what Satan is saying. He, he, he didn't tell you the truth. He lied to you. And then, the, and then beyond that, beyond that level of accusation is maybe God doesn't even really exist. And isn't that something that we all have to think about? You know, we hear this beautiful, you know, stories, and then we have the divine principle, which explains how God is working in human history. But when you're, you know, of course, after it's all done, you know, of course, God is always in control. But when you're going through it, Satan is trying to destroy your spiritual life. And, and, and how does he do it? He does it through, through the accusation and the resentment. So the victory of Joseph is the victory of Jesus and it's the victory of true, true, true parents. They overcame that course of accusation and resentment. I don't believe any one of us can avoid this, the same course, if we want to you know, be used by God and be close to God. So, of course, at the very end of the story, if you, if you read uh, Genesis, when finally you know, he meets his brothers and they realize who he is and they feel ashamed that they tried to kill him and, and murder him, then he says, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. So, I, that's my Christmas message to you this morning. I, 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 I pray that all of us can have the same victory that, that, that Joseph had, and Jesus had, and Truth Father had. Thank you.